Hello and welcome. As mentioned, my name is Simon Andrelli. I'm a Manufacturing Solutions Application Engineer at CATI. Uh, today we'll talk resin removal. So more precisely, we'll highlight the common pain points that are kind of ubiquitous with the excess resin removal step in the post-processing of SLA and other similar technologies of 3D printing. And then we'll show off some of the really cool technology that our partner company post-process has developed to, to alleviate those highlighted pain points. So uh, let's dive right in. An overview we'll cover is a short brief of SLA and other resin technologies that apply to today's presentation, the post print steps of those technologies and which step I will be addressing. Uh, I'll highlight the, the multitude of pain points that single step creates and, and how post process addresses them. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of the many companies that have successfully implemented those solutions. And we'll finally finish off with, with a short summary in, in Q&A. So for anyone viewing the webinar, there likely is no need for an explanation of what SLA technology is, but I just wanted to quickly cover it and uh, just make sure that we're aware of the other technologies that have kind of duplicate post printing steps and to which then this kind of presentation is also completely relevant, right? So first is obviously SLA or stereolithography, the kind of the oldest of all 3D printing technologies, uh, yet one that is more relevant than ever today. Um, it, it, cures a layer of photopolymer resin by exposing into a direct beam of UV laser. The layer is submerged into a vat of resin. A recoder blade kind of evens out a new uncured layer of material above the previous, and the, the process repeats until the whole part's completed, right? Now, DLP, digital light projection, generally works by curing a layer of process sensitive resin using a UV projector from below a transparent kind of bottom of a resin tank. Uh, this layer is pulled upward and kind of thus separates from the bottom. The process repeats until the entire part is kind of pulled out of the tank, right? This is also referred to as a, a bottom up approach, where the diagram on the right showing the SLA setup shows it in a top down approach, right? So that note that both processes can come in either type of printing approach, whether DLP in top down or SLA in bottom up, really that's not important, right? And lastly, clip or continuous liquid interface production is very similar to DLP, except that there's an interface between the light source and the UV curable resin tank that is oxygen permeable, right? This allows clip to offer some unique chemistries. And, but for the sake of this presentation, that's, that's as deep as we're gonna go, right? Just be aware that essentially the type of printer itself is really irrelevant. What draws all these technologies together is the, is the type of resin that's used, right? That is what makes the post-process steps very similar across all these technologies. And again, I'm just highlighting that the pain points we'll talk about are the same for all three technologies, and then thus our solution will address them all simultaneously. So SLA printing involves a number of uh, time, consumer, time consuming and labor intensive post-printing steps, right? And if you're familiar with it, those are, those as you likely know are excess resin removal, post UV curing, support removal, and then surface finishing. So as the title of this webinar indicates, we will only talk about the resin removal portion of the post printing workflow, but be aware that post process does offer automated solutions, both for SLA support removal and surface finishing. So if you are interested in, in easing some pain points in those areas, visit the location section of our website, cadi.com and give our nearest office uh, a call or simply just email us at cati at cati.com. Now, according to an annual post-process survey, customers have stated that their workflow maximization inhibitors are length of time to finish the part, consistency of finished part, skilled labor being used for non-value added activities, um, throughput limitations, damaged parts, and others, right? So let's look at some of those and see how post-process solutions can address them. So what are some of the reasons that length of time is an issue and why is it number one? How can we allevi alleviate it? The traditional process involves taking the resin covered part through a number of baths involving chemicals such as TPM and much more volatile ones such as IPA. And finally, a water rinse. So we're taking three or four steps that traditionally take significant time and we're reducing that time almost twofold. First, by lowering the required step count to two, and then decreasing the required soak time due to the machines being the fastest resin removal systems on the market, right? 
that have been field tested on thousands of trays to consistently clean trays in under 10 minutes. So, so what does that look like from a numbers perspective? So in the traditional process of taking part through multiple IPA baths with technician intervention of part movement, agitation, brushing, uh, and so on, has a tight cycle time of about 20 minutes, right? With technician interaction of 10 minutes. So due to the previously mentioned lowering of steps requiring now only two placing the part in the machine and then subsequently rinsing it off with water, we're able to lower that cycle time down to 10 minutes and the ten, uh, technician interaction down to only two minutes. So a total savings of 18 minutes per cycle. And 18 minutes may not sound like much, but when we multiply that out to only 50 cycles, we have a total savings of 15 hours. Um, that's a huge improvement that can't be overlooked. So how are such improvements possible? It is due to a combination of post processes patented SVC or submersed vortex cavitation technology, and their specially formulated detergent, PLM 403 sub, or 403 for short. The full immersion of parts and print trays allows the chemistry to access complex geometries. The vortex is a strategic pumping scheme to provide even exposure to agitation. And finally, cavitation, which is ultrasonic formation of vapor bubbles, creating high frequency waves to loosen viscous and persistent resins. Moving on, on to another pain point, consistency of finished parts. So due to the manual nature of the traditional processes, the skill of the technician will affect the quality of the end part. So having a number of different technicians of different skill levels certainly creates a quality control problem. Even the same skill technician can't be expected to maintain the same exact quality of part from the first minute of the shift to the last hour. That's where post-process automated 3D software comes to shine. With over a million lines of code, Automate 3D is the brain behind the system. It has a robust library of over half a million parts and is consistently absorbing more information, both through benchmarking of new products and data received from existing clients. This means that not only are you able to keep a much tighter control of what's happening to the parts by employing sensors to monitor and adjust various processes to maintain the most optimal environment, but post-process has essentially digitized the tribal knowledge of manual resin removal. It has pre-established parameters that have proven results for an impressive list of resins, and we'll talk about that we'll talk about a little later. Back on the subject of manual labor, when your production ramps up, you won't have to qualify, hire, and train new employees. You'll simply be able to purchase another unit or upgrade to a larger one. You can start off with, a, with something as small as our Senti unit with an envelope of 18 by 10 by 6. And once production ramps up, you could move up to a more than five times larger Demi. Or if parts are flying out the door, the recently released behemoth, the, the Demi 4000, with an internal envelope of three feet by three feet by two feet. So no matter the current size of your operation, there's something to match your needs today and in the future. Another pain point is waste. IPA with the dissolved resin is considered hazardous waste, and as you likely know, needs to be disposed of as such. Along with the creation of hazardous waste, especially in an ever more green business environment, there's also the high cost of disposal. That's where the power of post-processes proprietary chemistry comes into play. Not only is it low odor and non-volatile, a huge benefit to worker safety, but it also has the longevity that is six times greater than that of IPA. That means you will be able to clean six times as many parts with the same quantity of chemistry. So not only will you have to store considerably less chemicals on site, you'll also see a huge savings, both from a decrease in hazardous waste disposal fees, but also in decreased downtime due to chemical switchover, not to mention the associated labor costs. As you can see in the graph, post-process latest 403 material outperforms all others as far as speed of resin removal with highest amount of detergent saturation. The cost is a big one, and this is where post-process really shines for me. They've developed an extensive and detailed ROI calculator that will really open your eyes as far as how much money is really being left on the table during post-printing. Reach out to us if you'd like to plug in some of the numbers, but be prepared to be surprised. During this year's annual survey, responders says that the VAT photopolymerization, so again, such as SLA, DLP, and 
clip had the highest post printing uh, expenditures at 51%. And that's huge. And it's really all the previously mentioned cost savings that add up to those huge numbers. The reduced manual labor of the resin removal process, the reduced waste disposal costs, costs uh, cost savings due to less manual labor involved in, in material switchover, a lack of need for a costly explosion proof environment. Uh, again, we could just keep going and going. So let's look at some of those real world examples. Here we have an ROI calculation for a, a low volume customer that's printing about 50 trays per week. Uh, they're all inclusive labor cost of 40 hours. Uh, they're seeing some significant labor savings. There's a decrease in disposal cost per tray, but there's an increase in consumable costs. Even though that there's that increase, because of the overall package, the customer was able to see a savings of $253 a week, making a total ROI of only 60 weeks. So very attractive. Once we were up to a higher volume application, in this case, comparing to multiple tanks of IPA and TPM with a, a tray per week output of about 350, their overall ROI was actually lowered all the way to 44 weeks because they were saving almost $1,000 a week. And once we go into a, a big unit like this, again, an, another one of the things that I wanted to highlight here uh, with this Demi 4000, I, I won't get into all the individual numbers, but as you can see here, the ROI calculator, we really deep dive deep to make sure that all the costs are understood and that an attractive ownership plan is developed, right? So if you're considering improving your post printing process, again, please reach out, let us type some of these numbers into our calculators and really show you what kind of savings are out there. So how does the unit actually do this resin removal, right? So I'll, I'll let Nicholas Kazulo, uh, Senior Application Engineer at Post Process, show you. So here's a little snippet from a recording uh, where Nicholas showcased the 40 unit processing an SLA part. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kazulo, Application Engineer with Post Process Technology. Right behind me is our 40. Uh, they're a member of our SEC Technology, which stands for Submerged Vortex Cavitation. They were running with our, our resin removal detergent, specifically formulated um, to attack all types of different resins, uh, including SLA, CLP, lift technology. Right here, I actually have um, a sample part in the theme of our unlock additive. You will see there with our logo. It's um, off of our figure four from uh, 3D systems. Utilizing uh, our tough black resin. It's a pretty viscous resin, uh, pretty goopy. What would be considered uh, challenging to clean with traditional solvents like isopropyl alcohol, PPM, DPM. Um, if you're running carbon, you're probably used to DPM, uh, IPA, or Trell, which is really expensive, overrated solvent. In any event, what I'll do today is I'll show you how we're going to process this heat or any other part for that matter, uh, utilizing our, our tiered fixture here. You can see that it has six different tiers, and with the size of this figure four platform, I can uh, line up three on one tier, and as many as six, depending on that. Okay, so I have it on the platform. Of course, I couldn't stack many more on here, so I will give you guys an idea of how this works. But before I drop it, you can see that this particular fixture is adjustable with the screws, so I can expand this out to accommodate uh, any platform size up to 14 inches, or slightly smaller, rather, on six sides of 40. The Demi, which I'll show you in a few minutes, is larger, uh, up to 18 inches in the envelope, and of course we have, um, I'll, I'll cover some other options as well. So, I have this dropped in. Most of our cycle times are between five and 10 minutes. You can see yeah, I have this set up in automated right now, automated software uh, for a 10 minute cycle time. And I'll show you guys the nature of the SDC technology with the bird meaning it's bird in the detergent. Um, uh, vortex, so for the V, uh, the vortex is the motion, the fluid motion that moves around the part encompassing uh, the entire geometry. And cavitation utilizing our ultrasonic to 
seen that part as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Probably here, keep working. You see that vortex motion starts to work underneath the surface. We have jets that move the fluid, circular pattern. Probably hear that um, of the, the vibration of that ultrasonic energy as well. So we're going to let this go for the 10 minute cycle time. So um, our 40 over there just finished up its 10 minute cycle on that key. So we'll go back over there and take a look. Alrighty. Switch out the lug quickly. All right. Give it a little shake. So I'm going to have um, Francesca rinse this off and dry it. But before we do, I just want to give you a little close up view dripping all over. Um, but anyway, that's the detergent residue on there. And you can see that sheen. And I'm going to pass this off to get rinsed and dried. And the nice thing about um, our detergent is that you can rinse it off in either water or isopropyl alcohol. Either works. The only advantage to using IPA is that it has um, it evaporates off faster, so it'll dry a little bit faster. But if you're if you're hitting your parts with some pressed air anyway, or just sitting them out the air dry, uh, water works just fine to rinse them off. Um, you know. Deeper, we want to limit the number of solvents we have on hand. That's what we've been able to do the majority of the time. Now, if you take uh, carbon, for an example, that's just the air in the background there. Carbon, for example, they recommend, depending on the resin that you're uh, utilizing, either IPA, DCM, Rutrel. Um, so you might have upwards of three, four different types of solvents that you're managing in your chemical lab. And now you have the ability to reduce it down to a single chemical RFLA detergent and just utilize water for rinsing. So you can see by uh, pass along the camera there, all the resins off of there is ready to go in the stirring oven. So pretty pretty impressive, huh? So Nick mentioned in the video that they're tackling lots of different resins, and, and here's an ever-growing list uh, of some of those resins that they've already tested. And uh, please make sure to contact us if you'd like to try a resin that's, that's not on the list. And uh, whether it's on the list or not, you'll be able to set up kind of a one-on-one -on -one video meeting, kind of one very similar to one that we just watched a snippet of, right? Uh, so either with Nick or one of his colleagues, and, and really get a chance to, to dive deeper into the solution. So we've mentioned uh, quite a few benefits, but, but one you have to talk about is, is versatility. So not only can the Senti, the Forti, the Demi remove your uncured resin from your uh, SLA, DLP, again, clip parts, but it can also be used with, with different chemistry to remove supports from uh, polyjet and FDM parts. So that's less vendors to deal with to cover the post-processing of, of multiple technologies less training required for users because the same interface is, is used for all the, the different technology again. So it's really a win-win. Um, let's take a quick look at a video showcasing a support removal. Meet the Demi. Automated and intelligent support removal for Polyjet, FDM, and SLA 3D print technologies. The world's only comprehensive software, hardware, and chemistry solution, enabling transformative results for additive post printing. Using software designed with programs built with data from lab testing and benchmarking, the Demi offers one touch, press and play support removal. Advanced remote access includes live software support, updates, and troubleshooting. The 
the Demi's precise temperature control with one degree increments eliminates thermal runaway for fast finishing without hard warpage. Diagnostics and process monitoring react to key process parameters, reducing hands-on finishing time. The Demi's proprietary SVC technology intelligently combines ultrasonics, heat, and fluid flow for unparalleled results. Designed with innovative vortex flow technology to ensure even distribution of mechanical energy, the system optimizes ultrasonic output by managing variable ultrasonic power throughout the cycle. Precision controlled mechanical and chemical agitation accelerate rate of removal with gentle action for fragile materials and fine feature details. Designed for use with patent pending detergents that are optimized for additive materials, the Demi's three stage filtration extends detergent life with increased throughput. No manual mixing of detergent means less maintenance and more machine uptime. Accelerate your additive operations with the Demi, the world's only intelligent solution for automated 3D post printing support removal. Spend more time printing and less time post printing with the post process. So don't forget, there's even more. The post process can help you with your SLA support removal and surface finishing needs as well. So again, reach out to talk about how we can improve your whole post printing process, not just resin removal. So just like the, the Senti, the 40, and the Demi, the surface finishing units also have the same type of uh, versatility. SLA, FDM, and Polyjet parts can all be finished using the same equipment. So let's take a quick look at one of the surface finishing units, uh, the Rador. Meet the Rador, automated and intelligent surface finishing for all 3D print technologies, both plastics and metals. Designed solely for additive manufacturing, the Rador enables hands-free surface finishing with consistency and repeatability, even for unique and delicate geometries. The Rador's exclusive integration of software, hardware, and chemistry allows you to achieve your desired RA with virtually no part breakage. The Rador software offers press and play surface finishing with quick select dosing frequencies to align part processes to various media options, geometries, and materials. The Rador's user-friendly interface allows for flexibility with cycle times and disposal options. And process monitoring with alarms and proactive warnings ensure your post-printing operation runs smoothly. The Rador's patent-pending suspended rotational force technology creates a circulating motion of the part is immersed in a mixture of media and fluid. This technology applies even mechanical force with uniform contact and friction, maintaining the part's dimensional consistency while keeping the fine feature detail intact. Designed for use with our patent pending detergents that are optimized for additive materials. The Rador software controls variable dosing to keep 3D printed parts suspended during finishing. Media, available in different materials and densities, work with our software and hardware to accurately deliver the correct amount of energy to produce the desired surface finish. And waste disposal is made easy with an automatic drain option that eliminates the need to transport waste to disposal. Accelerate your additive operations with the Rador, automating post print surface finishing with transformative results. Spend more time printing and less time post printing with post process. All right. So the main takeaways for today are using post process resin removal technology, you can have consistent low cycle times throughout the life of your detergent 
which will allow you to scale a production without hesitation. The decreased cycle times per batch removes a production bottleneck, enabling a high volume production. And through, through streamlining the overall resin removal process, we're improving total cost of ownership of your SLA systems and improving the health of your business. And last but not least, and as the last few slides have showed, not only can post process help you with your SLA prints, but they can become a partner in the post finishing of all major 3D printing technologies.